What's happening, folks? Gerald here, aka JFro90. Gonna give you my review, my assessment of the new Whitney Houston movie, aka I Want to Dance with Somebody. We gonna talk about that title too. I the, let me give you the grade first. I give it a C plus. I went in. My expectations were much lower, <laughs> much much lower. Go in with your expectations even lower than C. It it helps. Um, I don't. It's just the fact how involved Clive Davis was with this story, and I don't speak on it too too much. All respects due to Clive Davis for you know he's discovered amazing talent and he has helped the careers of some of the biggest names in the industry, especially in terms of women and black women and legends and newcomers. And, you know, we talk about Janice and then Bruce Springsteen even too. But, um, all that said, all that said, when it comes to the subject of Clive Davis and Whitney Houston, the, the, it's, it's complicated. And (laughs) I don't really want to share the full opinion online, but, I'm not that big of a fan of Clive Davis's perspective of many aspects of Whitney Houston's career through his lens. And so that gave me big worry about him being so directly involved with this movie. The story was good, but this also brings me to a point today off of Clive Davis onto the problem with modern biopics. We got a very big problem here. Let's just say it. Judy Garland, Elton John, Freddie Mercury, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, and Aretha Franklin, their stories are too big for the modern biopic. Now, see, the modern biopic that I'm referring to in that sense is today there's this need or this thing of really cramming really really cramming so much into the movie and it kind of just feels like the visual wikipedia page because the pace is often a mess and this one this one i feel like it's actually that's one of that's one of the negatives of this one this is where it really showed with that because it really just felt like this big moment to that big moment to this big moment to that big moment to this big moment to that big moment and that big moment and in this big moment and in this big moment and then you get a little breathing space here and then that big moment and then this big moment and then that big moment and then and it's like was she even a person did she you know and they they to be fair i'm not going to say they didn't give it any room for that but it could have there it nothing felt natural you know and that's the problem with a lot of biopics now. Ray didn't have this problem. Selena didn't have this problem. What's Love Got to Do With It didn't have this problem. It's this thing of these superstars and these superstar style <laughs> biopics, they tend to take the humanity out of the person and out of the story and the special, the little things, you know? This movie gave you pieces. It gave you pieces. That's what I can say with that. And so, yeah, the pacing, it could have been worse. It could have been worse, but I wasn't a huge fan of the pacing. And then, of course, everyone's, like, main concern and this and that. The main actress, she did decent. (laughs) She did decent. Especially where she really showed out and the few times I was able to lose her and see almost Whitney, she would go with the, it's the way she would talk at certain times. It's, okay. That's nippy. That's Whitney right there. <laughs> that's, that's, that's straight up Whitney right there. But, uh, and, and then, um, with the performances too, she really captured Whitney's performance movements and energy really well, actually. But I couldn't lose. I couldn't, I couldn't fully lose her, especially and especially when it came to the performances. I could not lose that I was watching someone being Whitney versus watching Whitney. And of course, that's not the case with 
um, Selena, Ray, Tina, well, what's love got to do with it? And then even in Jackson's movie, it's about Wiley Draper who played Michael in that movie. Like, my God. But anyway, um, but she she did good. She It wasn't bad acting. It wasn't phoned in at all. I just, to me, the way I put it, I had to pretty much look at it like watching a Broadway play. More often than not, with biographies on Broadway, that's where you have to get rid of your mental thing of, but they don't look like the person. They don't sound exactly like the person. When it's the play, it's just about who's the actor on that stage. You're just going for that, really. You might not even know their name, really. You're just coming to see the show. And um, in that respect... She did a good job. The performance I was most impressed with is the actress who plays Sissy Houston, Whitney's mother. I saw Sissy. <laughs> I saw Sissy. Uh, the actress who played John, Whitney's father, John Houston. The actor who played John Houston. Um, very good job. Very, very good job. And all, across the board, you know, because there's not as much on jo like available footage and things on John Houston as there is Sissy. But from what there is... I was believing that was John. I was believing that was John. And then the actress who played Robin. Very good job. Very good job with her. Very good job with her. And very and I and very respectful. I love how they handled Whitney and Robin's relationship. It wasn't dirty. It was well not dirty, you know. We we like we we it wasn't too mature. <laughs> like don't say it's like there's nothing wrong with dirty now. Um but it wasn't it wasn't it really I feel like it was respectful to what Robin said it was and to what most people said it was, you know, to that they were they were in a relationship and they were you know, together this way for a little while. It really did a good job of showing the intimacy. It really did a good job of showing the intimacy that Robin's book spoke a lot about. And I really loved learning about in Robin's book. Stanley Tucci, Stanley Tucci also did a good job as Clive Davis, I, I gotta say. But yeah, I, I liked it more than I thought I would. That's the bottom line. I recommend seeing it. I think the people who will love it the most are the people who know the least about Whitney Houston. That's how I feel about the modern day biopic that is not made for the fans, it's made for the people who, who don't who aren't fans, who might become fans after this, you know? And I I wish that I feel like they're missing out when they do that because you're not balancing the lines, you know? And sure, you can't get everything, but then that also brings me to, is it could be a whole other video within itself. I think we need to do away with mega stars, with mega careers, having two and a half to three hour movies, miniseries. The miniseries is the way to go with Michael Jackson, with Whitney, with Aretha. The Whitney, I mean, the Aretha um, Genius series, loved it. Fantastic. You know why too? Because that's another negative I would give this movie is that it really underplayed Whitney's creativity. Like they gave it to you, her ability to deconstruct a song that wouldn't seem like it's for her, but then the way she would make it her own, as we know Whitney did, you know, they, they gave you a little bit of that, but let's put it this way. The best piece, if you really want to get to know the essence of Whitney Houston's, from my perspective, my personal perspective, Robin Crawford's book, Robin's book. That's the best. Because before that book, the way I saw Whitney Houston's albums, it's specifically the early ones for her career, is that they were mostly albums that songwriters gave her songs or she did covers of songs. And then they picked the best ones to be singles, and that's that. <laughs> that there wasn't that much thought or attention into those albums. Robin's book set me straight that there was hard work and there was close attention at the progression of Whitney's, not only her voice and her music, but like on every aspect, her, her, her being a producer, her being hands-on. You know, it grew with every album. And I really appreciated that. And for this movie, there wasn't that much care. They pretty much, they gave you a little bit of that, but they didn't let 
the eras be eras, you know? Because her first era, her first album, the move so much of the movie could have just been what it took to get her to that first album's release. Like it took a long time, uh, took a long time and a lot of work. And she recorded a lot of songs for that first album. And it also took a lot of work to get her to record the songs in a more pop way versus the more soulful or gospel way. You know, that's all in the book. That is all in the book, you know, and it wasn't, it, I, it just, it kind of lacked that. It kind of lacked that. So for me, if you want to get to know Whitney and her story, Robin's book, then both of those documentaries, Cannot Be Me and Whitney, um, both of those I enjoyed. I think the Whitney one I enjoyed a bit more. Then can I be me? But both of them together, solid, very solid, because they both had things that the others didn't. But the Whitney documentary had more. <laughs> so, um, and then I will place this movie as third. The Lifetime movie, not even fourth. I will place that like six. Whatever's coming next, I'm sure it'll be. You know, yeah. <laughs> and Yaya did a good job in that movie, but I still saw Yaya. Um, Angela Bass. See what I what I what I will actually give that Lifetime movie credit for is that they didn't try to do the entire span of the career. They, I think, the Lifetime movie ended during the Bodyguard tour. Some like, yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. I actually feel like for a megastar's life, you can't be. You can't try to put in these mega moments and little clip and little flashes. Like you gotta, you gotta be a little bit more focused on certain things. And and then lastly, the title. The title makes no sense. I want to dance with somebody. Yeah, it, it's almost like they uh, pick a pick one of her number ones, and then we'll make that the title. What's what we're we doing for lunch tomorrow? That's the number one, and it's a hit. But that's not like her, that's not in any way a signature, her signature song. Uh, the movie could have been called Whitney, Queen of the Night, I Will Always Love You, My Love Is Your Love, Just Whitney, Whitney Houston. Most of those are album titles and song titles. But yeah, I want to dance with somebody. And they didn't even give that song that huge of a moment in the movie to begin with. That's another thing, too. They got the eras really mixed up. They had her recording Where Do Broken Hearts Go during the first album. It it was very mismatched. That, that That's why I kind of knew halfway through. This is a C movie. This is a C movie. As good or bad or whatever it gets from right now it's a c and it could have been better it just could have been better i feel like in different hands i feel like maybe out of clive davis's hands and pat's hands i feel like it could have been better but anyway those are my thoughts on the movie what are yours are you gonna see it um like i say i recommend checking it out i do not re i it's not that I don't recommend seeing it at theaters, but don't make it a point to see it at theaters. Like, if you find yourself, oh, I want to go to the movies today. Oh, I want to hear Whitney Houston and loudspeakers today. Then go to, then, you know, check that out. But, honestly, you could wait for your streaming service of choice. Prime, HBO Max, Hulu, that's me. You know, I would not advise seeing it at the theaters. I would not advise paying for it on on demand i would advise waiting for it to become available on one of the streamers you know so that, that's pretty much anything i give a c grade to is you don't have to rush to see it but i think you might have a good time with it. And that's the thing if you if i didn't know i had that's where i would have enjoyed the movie more it probably would have been a b ish <laughs> bish <laughs> but anyway it would have been a b ish movie if i was not 
the mega Whitney Houston fan I am. That kind of you, like I said, I went in with low, you. You did you, you you raised my my expectations a little bit, but still, I know too much. I've learned too much, and I remember too much. To uh, you know, they really had her recorded. And where do broken hearts go during the? Uh, y'all just. Uh, Robin, I I I want I'm waiting for Robin's book to become the movie or the mini series. Robin's book should be the mini series, and that could be really great. That could be really 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 good, and I could really, for all the stuff because it's like it's not even a tabloid stuff. It's not even um her sexuality or the dramas of it all. I want that intimacy of Whitney. The quiet times of Whitney really shown in a certain way, you know? I feel like we, that's the Whitney the world is less familiar with. The producer Whitney, I saw the producer Whitney in person working on the movie Sparkle. That is very special and that is very unique and that has not been shown. So Robin, please do a mini series, please, please, this... Whitney needs it, but not you. You could we could wait maybe ten years or something, but someone got to do something because you know this was good, but ain't getting no Oscars. Ain't getting you know this is it's entertaining. It's in it's an entertaining movie. It's an entertaining movie with great music, great Whitney Houston music. So that's my thoughts. Hope excited to hear yours too. Let me know in the comments and. um if you enjoyed this re review, <laughs> please go ahead and like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. If you'd like to follow me on social media, it's in the description below. If you would like to tip me, sponsor a request, just plain donate. That's also in the description below. Um, you can also follow me on Patreon. Well, become a patron on Patreon. On there, you're going to get benefits like early access to videos like these, Patreon-only videos like these, and occasionally extended videos like these. And then just lastly, thank you so much for even taking this time to push play on this video today means so much to me and it goes such a long way and beyond everything else please take care of yourself and each other